Hello, now we're going to look at the standard model and how the Higgs boson fits in with this. We'll start off with a little bit of recent history. This is from the Simpsons episode, The Wizard of Evergreen Terrace, and it was from 1988, quite a few years ago. Now, Simpson is a genius. He has solved four of the world's unknown problems in one sitting here. I'll show you what they are. The third one is talking about the density of the universe, uh, at, uh, which basically is, gives us the chance to predict what is the fate of the universe. Homer finds out that the density is greater than, than one, and therefore the universe will actually come together. There will be a big crunch which will be the end of the universe. It's actually wrong though. The second one is a disproof of Fermat's last theorem. Um, however, there is some rounding errors in this. The top one, which is one we're interested in, he's shown the evidence that there is a thing called the Higgs boson and he's actually made a good attempt at calculating the mass. This equation predicts the mass of the Higgs boson. If you work it out, it's only a little bit larger than the value that we know today of being the Higgs boson. So this was done 14 years before the Higgs boson was actually discovered. The one at the bottom is, is basically, I think it's Homer's quantum theory of donuts, and this one is not as well known, so that's a, of a personal interest to him, but it's not well known in, in the wider scientific community, let's say. So anyway, we're going to look at the standard model and the arrival of the Higgs boson. Now, many years ago, over a hundred years ago, the model of the universe were that we had protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and we had an electron. We were basically able to see that there were these things called photons as well, and it was believed that the electrostatic force was carried by the photon. It was believed that there was some energy that was missing, and some of it is carried by another particle. So it was proposed that there was another particle which was produced with the electron in beta decay, and that was called the electron neutrino. It was predicted 30 years before it was actually discovered. Then there was another problem. There were They uh, fired particles at neutrons, which were supposed to be neutral, and they found that they actually had some charge qualities. So even though it was neutral, it seemed to be made up of charges. So that suggested that the protons and neutrons, which were believed to be elementary particles, were actually not. They were made up of smaller particles. And now we know they're made up of these two kinds of quarks, up quark and down quark. You know that the, the, the atoms should explode. There must be another force carrier which is holding these quarks together, these quarks with the same charge together. So then they proposed a particle called a gluon. Also, there's a force which is responsible for this beta decay that we have on the left, and those are Z bosons and W boson. So we started to develop this picture of all these particles, and this is how far it went up to a certain point. Then, with the arrival of these uh, nuclear smashers and cosmic rays, they basically discovered another particle, which was a strange particle. This kind of upset the symmetry that we had of this, uh, this model. Soon afterwards came the discovery of another electron-type particle called the muon, and its associated neutrino. And then soon afterwards came the, what was called the charm particle. Notice that these particles are getting bigger and bigger, more massive. They're bigger, they're harder to find. It needs a lot of energy to be able to create these, but they don't exist for very long. Then soon we found the tau particle and the tau neutrino. Um, you see here there were some gaps in this picture and so there was this symmetry. They believed there was this 6 by 6 uh, symmetry so they said there must be another two quarks to fit this symmetrical system. And soon they discovered the bottom particle 
and the last one wasn't discovered until 1995, I believe, and that was the last particle, the top particle, which was a very massive particle, but it was charged. So this is basically the, the picture. However, there was um, a few questions that were left unanswered. How do these elementary particles get their mass? The theory says that these particles should have no mass. Some have very little mass, but some have large mass, and they shouldn't have mass. Where do they get their mass from? What gives them the mass? So the theory goes that they should be massless. The WZ should have no mass because we believe, we believe that the W, the Z and the photon are part of the electroweak force, so they should have the similar mass, i.e. zero. But they don't. Something is giving them mass. It was proposed that the, the mass was given by the presence of the Higgs field, which gave the mass. The, the particle which gave the, the mass is a Higgs boson. And it was proposed in the 60s. It was discovered finally in 2012. So the boson acts in the Higgs field. And it's the, the Higgs field is an area where all particles are given their respective masses. And it was discovered in 2012. So this is a standard model, and it was completed with the discovery of the Higgs boson. Now, there may be more things to find out. This is a, a complete model, as far as we know. So what are the key points? The Higgs boson is basically the missing link to the standard model, which was proposed in 1964. Yeah. So this boson acts in the Higgs field and it was responsible for the particles having mass. It doesn't actually carry force. It is responsible for acting in the Higgs field and is responsible for giving mass to the elementary particles. It's very difficult to find. It had no charge and it's very massive. So if it has no charge, it's very difficult to detect it. The up quark had a, a, a slightly bigger mass. However, the up quark had charge. It was discovered at the Large Hadron Collider in 2012. Some people have described it as the God particle, but now it can't be called the God particle because we do have evidence that it exists. And to finish, Homer and his fantastic prediction of the existence of the Higgs boson.